When your mind and thoughts live in a space where you're constantly busy either creating emotional drama for yourself by focusing on other people's opinions of you, or you're overly focused on assuming that other people are criticizing and judging you, you will probably end up using those opinions to paralyze yourself in a constant state of fear and self-doubt, which can cause you to stop yourself from taking action on your goals, stop you from truly exploring who you are as an individual, and stop you from enjoying your life, which is why it is essential to start learning and practicing what we're talking about in this video. change something about yourself just because someone else criticized you, made you feel embarrassed, or expressed some type of negative judgment about you. If we invest in caring so much about what other people think of us and we keep changing things about who we are and what we like simply to receive approval from other human beings, imagine the impact of that on a person's life. We'd live in fear, have constant anxiety and self-doubt, and hold ourselves back from really being courageous to explore who we are and what we want. So let's stop doing that, right? Because none of that sounds very good for us. In this video, I'll be covering five topics to help you stop letting other people's opinions of you matter so much so that you can learn to love yourself, increase your self-belief, and be confident in exploring who you are and what you really want to do with your life. The five topics we'll be talking about include, we often never really know what other people think of us. People are busy thinking about themselves most of the time, not about you. Caring about other people's opinions versus letting them matter. How we can determine whose opinions we should let matter. And above all, manage your own opinion of yourself. First, let's talk about the fact that we often never really even know what other people are thinking about us. And most of the time, we're busy making up stories that are based on our insecurities and our fears. Think about how many times a day you have thoughts about other people and the percentage of those thoughts that you actually share out loud with those people, right? You probably walk down the street and probably have dozens of thoughts about many of the people and things that you see. Now, some people might be a bit more vocal in sharing their opinions than others, but I'm willing to bet that for the average person, you're actually sharing very few of your opinions out loud directly with the people they're about. In this part of the video, I'm going to focus on this dynamic where we often never really know what other people are thinking about us. However, at the end of the video, I will definitely go over how to manage when people are giving you their maybe not so nice opinions of you and how to manage that. So I hope you keep watching right till the end. So basically, unless somebody actually tells you what they are thinking. We don't have any way of truly knowing what their thoughts and judgments are about us. And so my question to you is, if we don't actually know what other people think about us, why on earth is our default to assume that they are thinking the worst about us? Instead, why not assume they're thinking the best of us? Whether it's true or not, that doesn't really even matter. Yes, they might actually be thinking something really awful about you. Of course, it's possible. But in most cases, since you're most often never actually going to know, why not do yourself a favor and tell yourself a more constructive story that will boost your self-esteem rather than crush it? Let me tell you a story to illustrate this. So I lived in Japan for almost a decade in my 20s and 30s. And for anyone who's been to Japan, you may know that on average, Japanese people are pretty small in comparison to a lot of Westerners. And as a five foot seven woman from Canada who has been overweight for most of my life, I felt like a giant on a daily basis. So one day I went to the gym and while I was busy hustling away, a young guy grabbed a mat and started doing sit-ups in the stretching area in front of me. The guy was a little overweight and he was really struggling through his workout. Now as someone who was also overweight myself, I knew that it took a lot of guts to be at the gym working on your health around a bunch of skinny people and all I could think was good for him. This is so great that he's pushing himself and trying to change his 
his life. That is awesome. Now, after I had that thought, I then said to myself, you know, he doesn't know what I'm thinking about him. He doesn't know that I am cheering him on in my mind, thinking that what he's doing is fantastic. In fact, if he was worried about what I thought of him, he might actually assume that I was thinking something negative about him being at the gym and use that to just give up and stop going. So then why when I went to the gym, was I worrying that other people were judging me and thinking that I shouldn't be there because I was overweight? Wouldn't it be more constructive to assume that they were cheering me on just like I was cheering on that guy. So the new perspective I hope to offer you on this topic is let's assume that other people are thinking positive things about us and cheering us on. Now, whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter. Whatever you choose to believe is what creates your reality. So I hope you'll practice this. Whenever you start worrying that other people are having critical or judgmental thoughts about you, I want you to stop yourself and become aware of it and remind yourself it's just a story you're telling yourself. Then come up with a better, more constructive story, a story that actually empowers and encourages you. And then tell it to yourself again and again and again. After all, in so many situations, you're never going to know what others are really thinking of you. So why not tell yourself that they're cheering for you and sending you love? Second, did you know that People are busy thinking about themselves most of the time, not about you. Think about it. When you walk into a party or a room full of people, what is the first thing that you think? Well, for many of us, I'm willing to bet that even before you go to hang up your coat or say hi to a friend or grab a drink, you are thinking, how do I look? Do I look okay? I know that some of you might object to this, but come on, who doesn't straighten their clothes or check their makeup or their hair before going into a party? What I'm trying to point out is that these are all thoughts about ourselves. And the reality is that as much as we may love and care about others and want to help or serve others in our life, the truth is that most of us spend far more time thinking about ourselves than spending time thinking about others. So although this maybe isn't great news for the state of humanity, it definitely actually is good news for those of you who are worried about what other people think about you because they're not thinking about you nearly as much as you think they are. They are busy thinking about themselves and you probably are too. Third, I want to talk about the difference between caring about other people's opinions of us versus letting those opinions matter. In my 20s, I cared a lot about what other people thought of me, and I let those opinions, real or fictional, matter a lot and have an extremely negative impact on my self-esteem. And because I let those opinions and judgments of me matter, sadly, it led to me creating a ton of really negative self-talk for myself. More than a decade has passed, and I'm in my 40s now, and I'm incredibly grateful to have had a very wise mentor who taught me the following. As humans, our default is to care about what other people think of us. We are born with that as a part of our operating system. However, it is a choice if you want to let those opinions about you matter or not. It's normal to care, but it is a choice to let those judgments matter. So the question then becomes, whose opinion should matter? And what can we do when we want to choose not to let certain people's opinions matter to us? Well, let's answer those questions in the final two sections. Fourth, how can we determine whose opinions we should let matter? Find people you trust and respect. People who believe in you, who want to encourage you, who have good intentions, and who want to support you. Now, that doesn't mean that the opinions you'll be receiving from trusted people will always be super positive. Sometimes they might be more in the realm of constructive criticism, but if it's coming from somebody who genuinely wants you to succeed and from somebody who actually has experience in what they are sharing an opinion about, then it may be feedback you might want to let matter. In general, try to be aware of people's individual's biases or motives and observe if they might be sharing something to their own insecurities or fears. But most of all, 
trust yourself and use your instincts to assess the feedback you're receiving and make a decision from there about which opinions you want to let matter or not. And remember this, when your mind and thoughts live in a space where you're constantly busy either creating emotional drama for yourself by focusing on other people's opinions of you or you're overly focused on assuming that other people are criticizing and judging you, you will probably end up using those opinions to paralyze yourself in a constant state of fear and self-doubt, which can cause you to stop yourself from taking action on your goals, stop you from truly exploring who you are as an individual, and stop you from enjoying your life, which is why it is essential to start learning and practicing what we're talking about in this video. And fifth and most importantly of all, manage your own opinion of yourself. How we choose to see ourselves is the foundation that our self-esteem, self-love, and self-belief is based on. Our self-perception is a choice, and it is one of the most important choices we can make. Now, I'm sure that some of you out there maybe don't have such a great opinion of yourself right now. Maybe it's all the time, or maybe it's just in certain moments or in certain circumstances. I know that it probably doesn't seem like it, but ultimately, how we see ourselves is a choice, and the good news is that it is absolutely something that we can change. If you'd like more detailed support on learning how to love yourself in your life, I really hope you'll check out my three-part video series on how to love your life. I will put links below for you. When we learn how to love ourselves and our lives, it develops our confidence and belief in ourselves, which acts like a shield against negative things and negative people out there who maybe don't have the best intentions for why they're sharing their opinions or feedback with us. When we love ourselves, we have greater trust and belief in ourselves so that when others question or critique us, we can rationally and objectively look at those opinions and assess, is this something that is genuinely being shared with good intentions to help and support me? If it is, great, then we can choose to consider it further. If it's not, then we can choose to let it not matter, to not react to it, and to simply move forward. I know that it is really hard to let go of letting other people's opinions of you matter, but I promise you with practice, it is absolutely possible and it becomes easier the more you do it. So if you haven't already downloaded it, I'll put the link to my free guide on how to love your life no matter what. Also in my next video that I'll be releasing later this week, I will be talking about how to overcome insecurities. So I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel so that you can come back, join me again, and we'll continue the conversation. In the meantime, let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this video in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.